Drive one of the headlines on this topic that intrigued me. Driverless cars present moral dilemma study show. Richard Bishop from Bishop Consulting, automated vehicles industry analyst, is our guest on this topic, which a lot of people will deal with when we get to a point when driverless cars are out there and eventually become commonplace. Richard, thanks for your time. How sure. how big of an issue? Is this going forward with drive, with driverless cars? I, it's an intriguing question, right? Uh, who dies in a crash? It's actually true on the roads today. We're making those choices individually yeah. somehow. Um, but I, it's one of those things You in a complicated area like this, you can bring up questions that are basically unanswerable because you can, you can, your mind just turns in knots in this kind of situation. Right. And, um, and I, I think to your question, how big is it? I don't think it's going to stop the market. I think the market no. demand is huge. I think you're right. No doubt. And I, and I heard some folks debating this again this morning, which reminded me of the topic where some were saying it was on CBS this morning. Well, it, for the greater good. And, and I understand that. Okay. And, and we can all sit here and say, we hope we would make that right decision, Richard, if it was us, or it was driving into two or three people. But are we really, in that case, going to make that decision? And are we automatically a bad person if our first instinct in this split-second moment is to save ourselves? Yeah, and, and you know, the survey is asking people to make choices. I've got no problems with surveys. They're always limited. But, you know, imagine if your carpool driver asks you when you get in the car in the morning. So if we get in an unavoidable somebody die situation, you want us to die or the person outside the car? Right. I mean, come on. Um, you know, and imagine you eventually get your own automated car and it's actually got a configuration screen with the same question, A or B, you die or they die. It's just not very practical. No. And we have to understand that this is a consumer product and the, the car companies are not going to put these systems out there until they're very, very capable in the regular everyday driving situations. So we end up with a much safer world. Right. Um, even if there's a situation that you could argue maybe it didn't make the right decision. Well, here's another one from this morning. And I think Charlie Rose is fantastic. He's great on the show and his interview show is legendary. When Charlie brought this up, Charlie goes, well, I'd want to know who I'm going to hit. So wait a second. <laughs> if it's the next uh, individual who's a doctor who's going to save lives, then I'm going to die versus it's some clown who's cheating on his wife i'm going to run him over and and how are we going to process that information yeah and it's the kind of thing that you could talk about forever you know philosophers ethicists they'll talk about it but you know who's going to really ask that question in the showroom when they're buying their car maybe a couple of folks but generally i think people are just going to buy these vehicles yeah. and they're going to use them they're going to love them how I mean, i've got a i've got a car now that uh, does automatic emergency braking. Um, and yeah. you have to remember, the, right. the study talks about fatalities and such, but it mm -hmm. doesn't even get into the world where a car is going to break before it hits something, even if it can't avoid a collision. Um, with, with cars today, with these kinds of systems, you have to try really hard to hit something. I mean, they're beeping at you and hitting the brakes. That is true. And, yeah. So when we're headed this way, yeah, because we're talking about various styles, including the Science Magazine one, when, when we get to this point, and I think you're on hold when maybe we're in the second or third version of these cars and we're just stunned by what they're doing and computers are, we see it every single day, an amazing thing. How confident are you as an, as an industry analyst in this area that we are going to come up with computer programs that are going to make that ethical decision? Um, it, there will be some degree of that going on. I've talked to folks in the car industry, you know, they're looking at things in, in a much more simplistic way. I mean, one of the most fundamental things is the, the driverless car will not harm or make contact with any law abiding road user, you know, any bike, pedestrian, car, whatever, because that's a fairly orderly environment if everybody's obeying the law. Yeah. So the car has to at least be at least that smart. And maybe now I'm just I'm not quoting anybody, but a second rule could be driverless car will break before striking any object it cannot avoid. Mm -hmm. You know, you can boil it down into uh, engineering terms in that sort of way.
So we have so many people. Again, Richard Bishop is with us, Bishop Consulting, automated vehicles, industry analysts on this ethical dilemma where we're going with driverless cars and the decisions they make on safety matters and potential accidents. It's such an amazingly competitive business, Richard, because it's worth who knows how many billions down the road. On this computer ethical issue, is everybody working on this separately or will this be shared in any way? Uh, I see the car industry doing it the way they had before, which is it is done individually by the system providers, whether it's traditional car industry or, or Uber or Tesla or whoever. Um, I can't see it going any other way. I can't see regulators trying to get in there and, and define it, except maybe in very broad strokes. As someone who's an automated vehicles industry analyst, how close do you think we are to driverless cars? Uh, well, I think you and most of your listeners have probably been passed by a, at least a semi-automated car on the yep. road by now. Right. You know, there's probably a dozen different models that have a, uh, you know, lane centering and the uh, forward um, uh, distance uh, keeping. So in terms of getting up to those higher levels, I will be there by 2020 um, from all my discussions with the car makers, a system that can basically allow you to drive hands off, feet off, and even eyes off, but with your with your brain on. You need to be available to take sure. over within maybe, you know, a 10-second warning or something like that. So do you think in some ways because so many of the newer cars – They'll 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 park for you. They'll they'll brake quickly. They'll 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 sense maybe a car, even a two cars ahead of you, braking quickly because these advancements have taken place in such a dramatic way. Again, with newer cars, and a lot of people have had the car they they're driving right now for sometimes ten plus years. Do you think the transition to the driverless car isn't going to be as dramatic as most of us are making it out to be? Uh, you know, not dramatic at all. If if the world was such that driverless cars could drive only on roads with other driverless cars, and somehow that world was created 10 years ago, we would have had it 10 years ago. But the last 10 years was for all these scientists and engineers and software coders to figure out how to make these vehicles work in today's traffic roads exactly as they are and with other humans driving. And so it's just going to be a mixed environment for a while. And Kind of like I said before, you won't even notice it in terms of the, these cars around you on the on the freeway. So when you think of this and, and you deal with this in, in many levels on a, on a regular basis, on the ethical challenges with driverless cars, what else should concern people when this is going to become, I don't know about the norm, but more expected in less than five years? I think the concern should be that um, the, the systems give you a sense of confidence. Uh, of course, the most natural concern is, is it safe? And people yeah. have to have some way of deciding that for themselves. Think about when you get into a, a taxi, somebody else is driving, and at some point you have no concerns or you have concerns with that person's driving. How do you decide that? Somehow these cars have to give the same degree of confidence. Richard, enjoy the conversation. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thank you. Richard Bishop, Bishop Consulting, automatic, automatic, automated, excuse me, vehicles industry analysts.